So why don't people follow through? Really, because it's hard. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor, I've read this book. I'm gonna summarize it to help you follow through and finish what you want to. A hack is temptation bundling. And this is when you combine an obligatory task with an instantaneous reward. And when you can actually bribe yourself into working hard, suddenly finishing what you start isn't actually a massive exercise in willpower. It's that pursuit of something pleasurable, if only just by association. And think about the systems that you set up to help you. These are sets of daily behavior, and they contrast with goals because goals are one-off accomplishments, whereas a system emphasizes consistency and long-term success. Following through is related to focus, self-discipline, action, and persistence, but it's not synonymous to any of them. If you imagine a robot and you could think the head, this is where you focus, hands and feet, prioritizing execution. The heart is persistence and the spine is self-discipline. And the spine of following through this self-discipline is what enables you to keep that head down, work when you need to, even if you don't want to. And it's gratifying and fulfilling to be able to pull together focus, self-discipline, action and persistence within ourselves because then we could potentially watch our dreams turned into reality as a result of this. Time management. Now this is the practice of using time in a way that maximizes productivity and efficiency. Good time management involves not only being able to schedule tasks, but also obtaining the insights and good judgment to recognize which tasks are best done at what particular time. And I'm a great fan of an electronic calendar in which I can plan my day, move things around, and if I don't get that done, move it to a different day. I digress a bit. So inhibiting tactics, these are ways that we can actually plan against ourselves without even realizing it. This would include setting bad goals, procrastination, indulging in temptations and distractions, poor time management. Now, psychological roadblocks road are ways that we don't follow through because we're unconsciously protecting ourselves. This could be laziness, lack of discipline, fear of judgment, rejection and failure, perfectionism out of insecurity and a lack of self-awareness. And just remember that these internal motivators that we all have are really the carrot, whereas the external motivators could be thought of as the stick. And external motivators drive you forward really out of that fear of something unpleasant potentially happening, whereas an internal motivator uh, it makes you feel that reaching your goal is going to give you a big reward and lots of pleasant benefits. So you have to spend money, effort and time, give it up and sacrifice things that you may want to do in order to complete goals that you want or need to do. And this is important, nobody likes to sacrifice and to overcome sacrifice we really need to make what we're doing seem worthwhile. We need to keep the motivation powerful for that so that the sense of sacrifice doesn't overcome that and you stop. And motivation, you, you really to in, increase and sustain this, you can use cues around your house or your work environment that will remind you of your goal. Ideally, these could involve all five senses, even taste, so that when your motivation dips a bit, you're reminded, this is what I must do, and this is the reason that I'm doing it, so that you're not going to forget, because otherwise, out of sight can be out of mind. Rules. Now, these can be useful because they can almost put on the blinkers so that you're focused on something and you're not distracted by other things. Holding a mindset that um, what you're doing is both worthwhile, valuable, and relevant to your goals is extremely important. In addition, holding the belief that what you do, the work you do, 
can and will lead to improvement is also important because no matter how hard things get and things will get hard, if you keep working and believe that that will help you reach your desires, then you won't give up and I sincerely hope that you'll achieve all of the things that you set out to achieve. Because it's a bit like YouTube, people put so much effort into these videos, some don't gain traction. I believe that these could help people, that's why I'm sacrificing some of my Friday night making this video instead of doing other things which I'm hoping to do soon when hopefully my camera doesn't fail again. Let's not create self-limiting beliefs. These are things such as that you're not as good as other people and these beliefs can hold you back, they're damaging. Equally, when you're thinking about your environment, minimize distractions. Just as I said, out of sight is out of mind for motivators, it's the same for distractions. Therefore, try and put your phone away if you're working on the computer, otherwise it can sidetrack you. I turn off all my notifications, I keep my phone on silent, my friends and family don't really like that, but otherwise I can't get things done. Try and create default actions where possible. This is aiming to create a path of lowest resistance so that it's actually easiest to do the thing that you want or should do rather than something else. So this would go with dieting, for example. You'd put fruit on the table rather than chocolate, which you may not buy or hide. Single tasking. This is an important concept because unlike multitasking, in which you're using energy to switch from one task to the other. You're just focusing on one particular task and you're not expending mental energy switching between tasks. And you may want to do this with batching. That's what I try and do in the workplace, doing administrative things, results at one part. Often people interrupt, so that's not the best thing, but you can only try. I, a don't do list. You'll all have heard of to do list, but it's worth giving a little bit of thought about a don't do list. Now, this is something where you think a task or, or, or some kind of action you can't move forward on. Any more progress is not relating to you. You cannot put help in to complete it. Therefore, don't spend time on a distraction like this and don't let it insidiously invade your space and stop you doing things. I love this 40-70 rule, and that's about how to tackle inaction through the amount of information you know. So if you know less than 40% of the information, don't take action, find out more information. If, however, you know 70%, then that's the time you take action. You must act, because you'll never have 100%. And chances are, if you manage to get 70% of the information, that's more than sufficient. The rest you'd learn along the way anyway. In addition, it's important just to do nothing from time to time. That R&R &R is important, that rest and recovery, relaxation. Athletes would do it, for example, between matches and intense training sessions. Overthinking. This is when you fixate on something and can't seem to take the first step towards action. Instead, attempt to zero in on the details that matter, deliberately ignoring everything else, and it may give you that sense of clarity to take action. Worrying. This is when you fixate on something and inevitably start drawing negative scenarios and conclusions. And it can also mean that you fixate on things that you can't control. The difficulty is you could potentially ignore things that you can control. Therefore, the, the solution really is to focus on the present. Focus on what you can do right here, right now. I hope you found that helpful. What you can do right here, right now is watch some more of my YouTube videos and I'll see you next time.